My name is Isaac Dia, and I'm here to show you the unseen. Today, I'm with a very special guest, Miss Victoria Tara. She is a contemporary artist based in Miami. Miss Tara, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the pleasure to be interviewed by you. I really appreciate it. Oh, no. Thank you so much for uh, coming on and doing an interview. We really appreciate it. So could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, uh, like who are you and like how did you get started in the art world? Um, sure. Well, I was born and raised in Ukraine. And so um, that was my first experience with arts there. I um, painted, I started painted as long as I remember myself. So as a child, I was drawing, painting, doing arts. And I remember always wanted to be artist when I grew up. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that um, said, I graduated from art school. Um, and at the time, even though I really liked painting and I experimented with different media, it was not um, uh, that I knew what I really wanted to paint. Like an artist always has to find some kind of signature style. Yeah. And I, I found it that basically back about 15 years ago. Um, following my spiritual path so it's a long story i was um, involved in meditation and uh, several trips to india and i also have um, formal education in psychology interior design so everything kind of shaped me to be who i am right now and then one day it just just came to me so yeah that's that's awesome um, and I actually wanted to talk about that. You know, you were born in uh, Ukraine. So how did you get introduced to, um, to, well, your paintings are based on like Eastern philosophies. And I know you believe in a, a lot of Eastern philosophies. How were you introduced to them? And then what made it like resonate with you? Um, interestingly, you said that it's based on Eastern philosophy because I see it more like based on archetypes, which is a universal expression of uh, um, archetypes, which is basic um, universal forms that um, are seen in different cultures. Although in Eastern tradition, it has been more articulated, so to say, it was more like better preserved and presented to us uh, at this age. So we could see it um, more in Eastern tradition, but basically it's as relevant to Western or to any tradition of the world. It's um, unfolding lotuses and circles, something very basic. Like we all can relate to that as humans. And it's very unifying in a way because it's the archetypes of healing and um, prosperity and wellness, good fortune, unfoldment of a uh, lotus uh, apparently represents the unfoldment of human spirit to attain in the highest realization, which is enlightenment, which is of course more presented in Eastern traditions, but it's very symbolic how it grows out of the dark, darkness, the mud, something that is not so appealing. And then it grows through it and it becomes, um, before it blooms, it's sort of like unknown what it is. It's like the journey of the human spirit towards the light. And as the sun shines, it finally blooms. It's like our spirit blooms into highest um, self-expression. Yeah, that is a, that's really beautiful. I never thought about it like that. And yeah, I also wanted to talk to you about uh, the symbolism that you use on a lot of your paintings. Um, I noticed a lot of them are either like uh, nature, like a, a moon, flower, the sun, the ocean, and you use like naturey colors, like very rich, deep blues, vibrant reds, oranges. What do those symbols like symbolize to you? What do they mean to you when you use them? Well, to me, they mean 
all goodness, you know, all um, peace and um, wellness, something that is um, very comforting to me, to my to my perception, to my soul, you could say. Um, honestly, I, I don't have like a logical um, way to approach it when I paint. I don't know what's going to be. I kind of relax and I meditate and I actually kind of, you know, I like to say I get Victoria out of the way and then it comes through. So that's been my practice to get Victoria out of the way. And so and then it comes through. And then when I see it, I'm like, wow, I could never have figured it out on my own. There is something bigger than me that is present there. So um, I have a lot of relevance um, and respect to what comes through. I, To me, it's just probably like the highest the form of who I am, the lighter, brighter, more um, divine, maybe I could say, mm -hmm. that um, shines through. And that is what we have in all of us. And so in this way, this art, it invites for the viewer to resonate with that part of themselves that is that too, is that light. Sometimes I say I like to what I paint is light, it's different expressions of light. Yeah, yeah. That we have it's the inner light, which is also reflected outside, but it shines from within. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like I, like, I, like uh, I guess art doesn't it's not supposed to make sense. It's just uh, um it's like a, a feeling. Uh, that's it's, what I like to say. It's like a feeling. It's like experience. It's, it's. It. I could say that I could talk about it for hours and hours. At the same time, there's nothing much to say. Yeah, I, I know. You know, what you mean. it's like a lot could be said, but at the same time, it's, it's some beyond that. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I get it because um, every time I like to go out to like a museum or an exhibit or something. Um, when you like really find a piece of art that like resonates with you, it's like I can I can stare at that art and I can like try and explain what it means to me, but there's really no words that can like really there's nothing to like explain how it really makes me feel. So yeah, I, that's true. I really appreciate you bringing that out because it's it's very fundamental about um, you know good art is that it it touches something within the viewer that is unde undescribable but yeah. you know when it's there and it's very precious it's very powerful and that's why we love art yeah yeah that's why I'm I'm so big on art is because um it's like a a way to describe an emotion that there's really no words for yeah. Right. Yeah. You cannot explain it, but you could paint it. Like that's how I, <laughs> I can't explain quite what I paint, even though I could talk about it for hours. Yeah. But you know, but when I paint, it's just the most the fulfilling experience in my life. So I'm very grateful for I guess my destiny that um uh, finally I found this way to I found this path to be painting what I'm painting. Yes. So. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing. I've really like oh. never seen um, like any art quite like yours. Like when I uh, first saw it, it kind of like, I was just like, wow. Like it, it, it was um, crazy. Like the, um, the painting that's like to your, I don't know if the, since the thing is, the, the one below that one, the root of all, yeah. The the that's like my favorite by you. Um, mm. Give me like 10 years and I'll save enough money to buy it. Please don't sell it. <laughs> Anybody else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a feeling you, you know, will much sooner than 10 years. So. I'm praying, praying, praying. Um, but is... your, um, all of your paintings come with uh, poems and um, 
can you describe like where did the poems come from and like how did you come up with that to even like make a poem with them wow it's a very good question yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that um wow how do i come up with poems um well like all i could say is just like art they come to me it just i come across um first of all i read a lot mm. um not that i like read books all day long but in terms of like i am constantly sort of like open to receive some profound thoughts <laughs> even yeah. on social media like the accounts that i'm signed up to every time i open my instagram i am fascinated by like the most amazing profound quotes that come my way it just i guess over the years i just selected certain accounts that are like that and so um and then it just clicks like i'm painting the painting and i was like what is that quote what is that poem and then like i do have a lot of books at home and they're mostly you know philosophy psychology self development mm -hmm. a lot of poetry um and i'll be like wow like i'm finishing up the painting what what what's 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 going to be the it's quote <laughs> and I, I sit kind of like and then i was like somehow I, I pick like some random book I have not opened for two years and I open it and it's like right there yeah I was like wow this is it or I'm let's say just beginning the painting and then the quote already there like I see it on social media somewhere it just like comes at me so I save it and so I have files for each painting uh, <laughs> where I write, you know, what comes that I feel is relevant to to that um, experience that I'm having with the painting. Yeah. So even the name, sometimes it takes months after I finish the painting and the name comes. It's a, a <laughs> mystical process. <laughs> what can I say? I am, um, you know, just kind of like, as more as I let go of uh, get, letting Victoria out of the way, the more miraculous it gets. That's what I could say. It just all comes together. Okay, okay. That's, that's really cool. That's, that was a lot cooler than I thought because I was confused. I didn't know, like, just like the what poem. Did, what did you think it was? <laughs> I, like, I didn't know, like, does the poem come first? and then you make the painting or does the painting come first and then Usually the painting comes and then the poem follows okay and now like... sometimes sometimes it's rare but sometimes i'll come across something so profound it just like totally blows my mind i'm like wow it's like one day and i and i kind of like scan the paintings and it does not fit any of the ones i have and i was like wow one day maybe i'll paint a painting for that um and also i know that the paintings in addition to having like two or three poems where they also have names and i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right it's called sanskrit is that how you pronounce it sanskrit yes it's the ancient language of mm -hmm. um some sacred texts okay. from like thousands and thousands of years ago it's they, you know, the legends say it's a regional language, the first language that was given to like human race by God. I mean, it's a, it's like a mythology. It's a, it's a legend. Um, however, in, in like yoga tradition, there's still some like in yoga poses uh, named after, you know, it basically it's named in Sanskrit. It was translated to English later. So we, you, we do have some um, words in like in Sanskrit in our language, like for example, like Shanti, right? Like everybody knows Shanti. Yes. Like in your Shanti, after you finish the um, the exercise, then you say Shanti, oh. like a, like a piece. It, it translates like peace, but um, it's been used in English 
uh, original Sanskrit word as well. The Sanskrit to me, it's very deeply profound. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to more of the area of, of like a higher elevated state of consciousness, sometimes there's no words in English, but there are words in Sanskrit to yeah. describe different states of the mind. Um, which is so beautiful to me. <laughs> so I I just like that. Um, I'm fascinated by that knowledge. So yeah, it um kind of sounds like we were talking about earlier, where there's like like there's no words needed to describe how it feel how you feel. It sounded like a second kind of art to me, like when you were just talking about it right now. So another question I wanted to ask you was about uh your painting, obviously, but um when you know a lot of people view art nowadays a lot of paintings it's like through photographs and it's like yeah through photography and a lot is lost when you view photographs like that like you can't really like see the up close details you can't like really get a feel of like a painting and when I was looking through a lot of your paintings I noticed they have like they're not like flat like there's textures to them like you can see like the dots on it and like um, like the brush the texture, the texture of the canvas and the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. um is that like are all of those intentional in your paintings is that like adding to the storytelling of them like the textures and all of that or is that just like just how it's done well I I have a um, professional of photography here in my art studio as well, mm -hmm. so I take a digital, like I did digitalize my artwork. Uh, so those images that you saw are very high quality images, yeah. and as uh, by virtue of being such a high quality, it, it does present. Um, you know, you could zoom in into little details like that. So it just shows that it's just um, as close as possible to the original. And that was my intention to make the colors because I use like, you know, colors a very big part of the, the image of the painting. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you just mix in a lot of colors, different shades of uh, different colors. So to me, it's important to present it digitally with a, uh, as close as possible to the original. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, with good quality photography comes all the details. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you want, one day you see the original, then you, you know, you, you see that all the details are there, the original. Yeah. You've been an artist for 20 years. You've done exhibitions for 20 years. You've done 24 exhibitions. Um, has there ever been like a reaction to one of your paintings that was like so memorable you just can't forget about it? You know what? I cannot forget when children see my art. It's just so, so sweet to my heart yeah. when they, when they, when they just stop. And they stop sometimes their parent and they look with like wide open eyes and they're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, because, to be honest with you, you know, like us adults, like on during the exhibit, if they see I'm an artist, so they ask usually very logical questions. What what does it mean? what uh, is all about, what represents, what you were thinking when you were painting, you know, that kind of question. But kids, it was just like so innocent and so like powerful for me. It was just for me to watch that reaction to me, just like the biggest compliment yeah. to an artist, to see how they're just, it's like pure fascination and uh, and wow, so they don't need words. Yeah, kids, I feel like they still have like the, they're not like ruined by the world. They still have their imagination intact. 
so they can like when they see it they can actually like feel what you're trying to convey into the art does your degree in interior design play like a part in the way you create art or is that like a totally separate part of your life um i think all my everything that i have done up until today plays an important role in the, me painting a painting today let's say it's um it's just like this synergy the blend of all the experiences and all the knowledge and people and travel and everything somehow plays its role to be uh, an interior designer was also my big dream yeah. so for me to um have done it i've worked as an interior designer as well in palm beach for a few years uh, before i moved to miami and that was an incredible experience as well so it was very enriching in many ways i was fortunate to be working with um brilliant um designer who were teaching me all kind of different aspects of uh, interior design I worked on fabulous homes in palm beach um with beautiful materials and fabrics and finishes and for me it was like very enriching very satisfying you know, in so many ways so and the people i met during that time and um and the kind of um beauty has been i have been exposed to i feel that it definitely contributed to my um appreciation for for elegance and yeah quality so yeah you're talking about how you traveled the world a lot um and you've gone to like india and you've learned a lot about psychology and art what which one of your travels like all over the world has been the most impactful on your like spiritual journey your artistic journey what particular country uh like just what which uh travel it, it doesn't have to be a country. It could be like multiple or like just which, um, which one had the biggest impact on you? Um, good question again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you <Really> amazing. <laughs> um, it's hard to say, you know. Um, the first that came up was Tibet. Mm -hmm. I went to Tibet. Sick. It was an, an incredible, incredible experience. I walked around Mount Kailash, which is very sacred mountain. Yeah. Um, it was very meaningful for me. It was very, very powerful experience. Um, but also I, I had great uh, experiences in, um, in India. Mm -hmm. In fact, my first... Um, um kind of like vision of my first painting came to me when i was in india for the first time that's how i found my signature as an artist i was actually physically in india and i was not looking to find anything to have to do with art so you know i, I think when we travel the most uh, why we love travel why everybody love traveling <laughs> do yeah. you know <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think that because when we travel, we are in a place of being totally present. Yeah. Because everything is unknown. We're disconnected with the, any kind of routine. Everything is new. And it's in this particular space, the mind becomes very vividly present. Yeah. In the present moment. And I think this is like the experience we unconsciously feel so drawn to. But then when we, like when I, for my particular experience, I traveled for so many years and now I got to the point when in my meditation, I learned to be in that space of radical present moment anywhere I am. Yeah. So I'm kind of almost like letting go of my, to travel like I used to 
because yeah. I'm I'm so present where I am. Yeah, I'm so present uh, just anywhere I am, and so it's just like no need to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all the magic is already here. Um, I hate to do this, oh. but we have two minutes and fifty seconds left um, before they kick us off. So I want to thank you so much for your interview. This was like amazing. Um, do you have anything you want to like shout out or anything that you're working on that you want to tell everybody about? Well, be present, be radically present and then miracles happen. And thank <laughs> you so much for your beautiful interview. I truly appreciate it. Okay. I am very grateful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for your presence. Of course, thank you. I'm, I'm really happy that we get to do this. Um, everything about Victoria will be in the description below. We're going to tag her Instagram, um, her website, the places to buy her art. Did you ever make your TikTok account? Yes, I'm following your <laughs> <laughs> advice. I did it. So yes, I have TikTok account as well. Okay, great. And we're, so we're also going to tag her TikTok uh, below in the description. Follow her, buy her art, everything, check it out. And thank you. Thank you.